Hey guys, so it's been a long time, but I'm bringing back another video finally. As you saw earlier, it's gonna be a new Yeezy that just came out. So it's gonna be looking at the new Yeezy 700 MNVN minivan. MNVN. Don't really know what it actually stands for, but it's the newest iteration of the Yeezy line from the 700s. Let me just pop them out for you. So this is the shoe right here. Fresh off the bat, it looks different compared to the regular 700 or even the V2. The upper has been constructed in a different material, but the sole of the shoe is the same shape as every other 700, just different coloring. So different things on this shoe that I've noticed right off the bat. So this upper is actually constructed in what it feels to be a nylon material and it feels very different compared to the regulars. I can find the shoe quite easily. There's not really any construction to it. And it just seems like it is just the one piece of material all around except for the tongue, which is attached just at the bottom. You can even hear what it feels like kind of like a rain jacket or any type of swishy track pants. That's what is the sound that I'm getting off this. And of course I got the all black colorway that I just recently dropped. It's a pretty standard looking shoe from my perspective. I don't necessarily see any real craze with this shoe other than it just being the new silhouette that's come out. Uh, so on the lateral side, you can actually see the 700 that's uh, printed on. And of course it being the triple black colorway, it's kind of hard to see, but if you are going to use flash on the shoe, this part lights up. And then again at the toe where you see these overlays, there's two lines that'll light up as well. On the back, you just have that kind of plastically heel cup. And then on the medial side, you don't actually have anything except for the black nylon that the shoe is constructed of on the upper. Another key difference about this shoe is that the actual lacing system is really different. So we have the inner eyelets, kind of like a lacing system similar to the Nike Air Max 97 where it's on the inside. So it doesn't get caught on too much. Uh, it's actually just one lace because at the top you can see that it is a little loop and I think they call it the unlimited lace or something similar to that correct me if I'm wrong put it down in the comments so this lacing system is actually designed to make the shoe just a slip on and the interesting with this is when I look at it even further I'm looking at the tongue so this tongue construction it's kind of looking like two horns, which is seen similar on the Yeezy 500 Stone, uh, the Yeezy 500 Slate Highs, and I think that might be it. So they, they redid, or they used this shape of the tongue instead of having the normal Yeezy 500, which just comes to one little point. So that was another thing I noticed that was different about this shoe. But yeah, going back into the slip-on portion, so, in regard to these laces, they do have some stretch to them, although it's not that evident right at the beginning. It's important to know that they will stretch out over time. And at the beginning, it is a very, it's a snug shoe to put on just like any other uh, slip-on shoe that you might be familiar with. But over time, it will become easier to put on. And especially with the padded tongue, over time that will become a little depressed because it is heavily padded. So. Uh, that's what's another factor of it making it a little difficult to put on as well. In relation to size for the new Yeezy 700, I do want to say that true to size should be okay for you guys. In relation, I wear 10.5 in the regular 700, in most 350s, and even the 500s. And I went with that same size for this shoe, and this one seemed to fit really nice. So regardless that it's just a slip on, it will loosen up over time. So I just suggest going for your true to size in this model. So going back to the shoe, we're gonna focus on the sole. So again, it's the same sole that we've seen on every other 700, just in a different color. So nothing too much compared there. Of course, when we start walking, you're gonna see those creases that are probably gonna form here and in the back of the foot. 
I also think that these little ovals are still reflective compared to other Yeezy 700s, but I will do a little test later on to see. And then on the bottom, we still have that Harrington bone traction pattern. And I'm very surprised to see that we do have boost. I didn't think that this model actually had boost in it. And that's why uh, it was cheaper. But yes, they contain the boost within the sole, but they just changed the upper to less premium materials. And that's what basically helped reduce the price on this shoe for consumers. So the regular Yeezy 700 uh, retails for $400 Canadian. And depending where you live, that'll add tax on top of that. But they were able to bring this shoe down $100 less to $300 Canadian. To justify that with just the upper, like again, we're looking at just one material compared to the regular 700 um, that has different types of suede and fabrics on it. But again, for me, the regular 700 seems like it's easy to get dirty and it's hard to get clean because of the suede materials. Whereas this one, I'm not 100% sure, but it could be water resistant because of the nylon material that I'm feeling. So that's a bonus in my opinion. The only other one is that the aesthetic of the shoe, it being a little flat and squishy, could deter other people, but when you put your foot in it, it'll look normal in my opinion. And it, just depending on the sound, like you're not gonna be rubbing your shoe against many things, but just to have that sound there. One thing I do really like about the shoe is the amount of reflective on it. So we have that full 700 uh, imagery right there that will be reflective, including the toes, and then we might have these ovals as well that are also on the medial side. And for the shoe to still contain boost, it's gonna be fairly comfortable. Uh, the 700 is not the most comfortable shoe by debate, but I think it's a pretty comfortable shoe. You're not gonna be as squishy as the 350, but it's definitely gonna be something that's comfortable enough that'll be better than most shoes on the market. And then on this shoe, they do have insoles that you can take out. It's a little harder to take out just because of the construction of the upper, but... Five minutes later. All right, that was definitely harder to take out than I thought. But again, we just have a Yeezy insole, so it does not contain any ortholite to it, just because we do have the boost in this shoe, so it's not gonna be like the 500s. And then on the inside, we just have that white uh, little top fabric over top of uh, the boost. And then our size tag is actually going to be on the inside of the tag instead of it being on the, I think it's on the lap side, usually on 700. So yeah, overall, this shoe is a nice shoe. It's an all black shoe that some people may love because they love all black shoes and the fact that it's Yeezy and that's the newer model of the 700, that might be something that people really wanna get. But for me personally, it's a shoe that I don't really need in my repertoire. To me, I don't usually wear all black shoes just because I think they look a little clunky. And for this shoe to be the model of the 700, which is one of the clunkier shoes, it's just something that is definitely not my favorite uh, style. And I'm a fan of the lacing system, it just makes it easier to slip on. I don't mind the materials that they went with, with the, on the upper, just because there might be added water repellent capability, which is something nice in my opinion. And the level of uh, 3M that they put on the shoe is another attractive piece to the shoe. We're gonna have that encapsulated boost uh, in the sole, which is really nice and comfortable. But again, for me to justify spending that amount of money on a shoe that I don't really need, it's something that I can't really do. But regardless, that shouldn't deter anyone from not buying the shoe if you do like it, because I think it is a nice shoe. Uh, it just depends if you can afford to get it and be okay, and if you love the shoe, just go for it. I like the fact that Kanye was able, or Kanye and Diaz was able to drop the price for the shoe, because $400 for the regular 700 is so much money for just one pair of shoes. You could buy a couple pairs of different shoes for that price. So to see that price go down, it's definitely nice. One thing that I have noticed is that since the upper is constructed of basically only one material and it's black, it's easy to see glue stains. So I am seeing the glue along the edges all the way around uh, the midsole and the upper. It's not something that's like devastating or anything, but it's just something if you are noticing it, it'll catch your eye but on foot, you're not gonna be able to see it at all, and I don't think others will either. But again, this is a great shoe to have fall, winter season, summer. If you like wearing all black, you can definitely go for it. I don't see any issues with that. Uh, it's gonna be a slip-on shoe, so that's easy and nice to have. And 
it's a comfortable shoe at the end of the day. But tell me what you guys think about this shoe. Would you guys wanna buy it? Do you guys think it's worth uh, the $300 plus tax that they're asking? Do you like in the direction that they're going with with the 700s in the fact that the upper is being changed to something less premium? And then between this colorway of this model and then the orange, the yellow, and then the white uppers, which one is your favorite and why? Anyways, I hope you guys like the review. I'm gonna try and get some more reviews in the next little bit, but hope you guys have, have a good day. And if you liked the video, please put a thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see more content. Michelangelo out, and I'll see you guys in the next video.